Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for another Unpopular Opinions of Pokemon. This one is probably going to be significantly shorter than most because a lot of the uh, the 10 pages that I went through were arguments, uh, which will probably not include at least the majority of them uh, for the sake of everyone's sanity. We had some heated discussions in there about trophy cards that uh, maybe that needs to be its own separate thing. So, starting off here, we have Got006, keeping with the trend, saying Golduck's pretty cool. Uh, with the Golduck avatar, you can, you can tell people really just want the chance to plug their favorite Pokemon. Maybe that's a thread idea that should come up. Uh, <laughs> or just uh, pull out the posts from the Unpopular Opinions to find out. Uh, it'd be kind of cool, actually, to have a list of all the Pokemon and see if someone's favorite Uh is all of the Pokemon. I'm sure there's there's someone out there that likes all those really, really obscure Pokemon that don't show up very often. Voltagic says, the premium a PSA 9 on average sells for compared to a BGS 9 or a CGC 9 is justified. Um, I kind of agree. I, you guys probably know by now that uh, I don't grade, and uh, if I do buy graded cards, I crack them out and put them in my binder. Uh, some of those being a PSA 9. Uh, I think I've cracked a, I've cracked a BGS 9. Um, I, I haven't cracked any CGC cards yet. That'll be the uh, the Junk Slab era. Uh, it's going to be crack fest. Uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see we'll see how that works out. It'd be those uh, those nice little grades that shouldn't exist. Maybe some of those grading companies that shouldn't be grading cards um, in a normal market. But uh, I'm looking looking forward to the market cooling off maybe a little bit more before I get back into grabbing the, the vintage cards that I need, at least the expensive ones that more often than not, especially now, are going to be graded in some fashion. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess I, I kind of see that. Coop13 says, I'm sure some of these opinions have been expressed in the prior 190 pages of this thread. I can almost certainly say that some of them were. Uh, so first up here we have trophy cards are overrated. Why do you want to own something someone else earned? I have a few little league trophies in my closet. I'd be happy to part with. Just ignore the name on them. Maybe a little bit different. Um, I think anything that's a Pokemon card, anything with rarity, people are going to flock to. At least some people. And uh, and some of the artworks are enjoyable. Others not so much. Sorry for all you uh, you scroll boys in, in Discord. Scroll doesn't do anything for me. Uh, at least the artwork side. It's just uh, just some bare hollow foil. But uh, to each their own, collect what you like. Collect what you want. Don't let anyone, including myself, tell you what you should or should not purchase or have in your collection. Um, entirely up to you. If, if this stuff is what you like, go to town. I personally have too much of a challenge already with uh, collecting one of each English card, so... I don't think I'll ever get into the uh, the trophy stuff or the, well, outside of, like, the the English side of the trophy stuff, not the old Japanese crazy uh, trophy cards and stuff like that. Uh, next here, he says, the only Japanese cards worth owning are art-exclusive cards, CDGB promos, for example. Uh, I think that would be a good place to start, and that would probably be the place I start, especially with like the Versus series and, and stuff like that, um, before I got into the other Japanese stuff that I already own the artwork of. Uh, if I had unlimited cash and unlimited time, uh, I don't know. Maybe I, I would get into owning the, the Japanese version of everything as well, but uh, it seems a little bit like overkill at least based on my own collecting goals at the moment. Non-TCG cards, card ass, tops, phone cards, etc. are ridiculously overpriced and don't even have the wide nostalgic appeal actual cards have. They seem super bandwagony. Uh, I kind of agree. I, I think maybe it just stems back from when I was a kid. We never really wanted the tops cards. It was always like, oh, we have Pokemon cards at home and they were the tops cards. I know some people really like them, and again, that's entirely up to you. If you like tops, 
or card ass or phone cards or whatever. Go to town. Uh, but I don't know. I like stuff within the actual TCG. Um, so these are these are way back on the list of things that uh, that I would acquire. Like I'd get into the Japanese cards before I would get into uh, tops or I mean the other options here. The phone cards and the card ass are, are Japanese. So uh, before I got into tops. I would I would definitely start with uh, Japanese sets that are uh, Japanese exclusive. Shadowless base set is darker and uglier than Unlimited. Um, I don't know. Someone asked me this recently, and I don't think I really have a preference for one or the other. Maybe the shadowed version, like the Unlimited version, is a little bit nicer with the the box, but. They're extremely similar, and I feel like that part of the card maybe matters a whole lot less than uh, the artwork component and the general layout, which is almost identical. Base set two hollow is better than both. Um, I don't know, man. Like the, I, I feel like the swirl hype is overrated, but people like their swirls. Uh, so, again, who am I to to judge? I'd rather have no swirls uh, and the uh, the original hollow pattern then uh, a big two and two stamped on the card and swirls all over it getting signatures graded is silly and should only be authenticated as opposed to one through ten so this doesn't really apply so much with pokemon or like mo anything modern signature wise uh, i think this one through ten scale on the the grades uh, the signature grades. So if anyone hasn't seen it, if you if you have a card graded, uh, say with PSA, and it's signed, they will, by I guess by default, give you a one through ten grade on the signature and a one through ten grade on the card itself. Um, but the grade on the signature is always going to be very high if it's a brand new signature, as long as they didn't botch it or you didn't like stick it in your pocket and smudge it all over. Uh, but the the one through ten I think is more based on older signed items uh, so if you had an old baseball card that was signed and it's faded or it's smudged or whatever uh, you can't really read it all that well that's uh, that's where that one through ten comes in so a lot of the time you'll just see uh, the signature like authenticated rather than the the one through ten grade but I think you have to specify that on your submission with all that said it cost me literally zero dollars to let people like things, so by all means, collect what makes you happy. Yes, most importantly, collect what makes you happy. Don't let other people collect for you. It's your collection. Your opinion is the only one that matters. Dragon Warrior. If you like a card for the artwork, it doesn't matter if it has a first edition stamp or what the back looks like. Um, so the first edition stamp, I, I don't know if I can even really speak on this because I want both in my collection I think it's a significant enough of a difference in in release and in the card itself to to warrant having both I totally get the appeal of, of just getting the like the, the less expensive version and I think that's how a lot of people started collecting Japanese um, uh, not all cards but a lot of the cards were much less expensive in the the Japanese version um, rather than the English so that's where that comes in. Uh, the back, I <laughs> I have my cards in a binder, and they're also double-sleeved so that the, yeah, you can't see the back unless you really go through the effort of taking it out, but I still uh, still need that back to look, to look good. I'm fine with a little bit of whitening or whatever. If it looks like it came from a pack uh, or even close to it, I am usually very happy with it, short of some kind of factory defect where it gets run over by a forklift. Uh, in that case, I guess uh, I'll pass on it. But typically, comes out of a pack. That's the condition I want. It's something like a PSA 8. Perfect. Love it. Uh, it's right in that sweet spot where it's uh, not super expensive, uh, which would be bad if I was trying to collect one of every English card in a 10. Uh, well, some of them don't even exist. But, uh, yeah, that would be an absolute nightmare. Dizzle24 says, Unpopular opinion, Dedene is the best... Pika clone ask mouse Pokemon in my eyes. So at least he didn't say like Tyranitar or Cyndaquil or not Tyranitar, Typhlosion or Cyndaquil. Um, but uh, we do know he is a, a Dedene fan. 
And uh, now with the recent Dedene, he is also a waifu collector. For those of you that didn't know, uh, make sure to tag him on the Discord. Shout out to Discord, E4 Discord, to Rattle Pokemon Discord. Uh, if you see Dizzle floating around, uh, remind him that it's it's okay to collect waifu cards, especially a full binder of them. Explorer says, interesting discussion about trophy cards. I'll give my quick take. I wouldn't want to buy any trophy where there was a reasonable chance of someone thinking I'd want it if I hadn't. Example, I absolutely love the League Cup Champion Blastoise and Piplup Playmat from Cosmic Eclipse, but I'd never want to own it. I was playing at the time and didn't manage to win any of the cups I entered. It would feel sleazy to buy it and rock. Rock up to a tournament with most people thinking I'd, I'd won it. On the other hand, I'd be perfectly fine owning a number one trainer Pikachu or something of that ilk. Nobody would mistake me for a Japanese kid who won it. Maybe this is completely illogical, but hey ho. So, uh, did did you ever think that maybe you just don't bring it with you to tournaments? You can you can just get one and enjoy it at home or something. Uh, that way, you don't have to worry about the uh, the criticisms. Uh, or someone asking you if you actually want it. Maybe just uh, put some stop tape over the, the champion here and uh, pretend pretend that it's just a normal playmat. Niche says, new opinion to get away from the trophy talk for a minute. So if you haven't noticed, uh, we skipped a bunch of the uh, the trophy discussion of people talking about whether they should collect trophies or not. Again, entirely up to them, but uh, if you don't feel like you should, or you don't think there's a good reason to, don't collect them. It's going to save you a lot of money. If you do like them, I have bad news for you. Your wallet is going to hate you if you're buying a bunch. Ivysaur is by far the coolest of the nine base starters. So, I do like Ivysaur. I'm a little bit biased here. I don't think I like Ivysaur more than Venusaur or Bulbasaur necessarily. I think they're all one and the same. I think you can appreciate the, the trio for what they are. Uh, but uh, yes, I am a, a Boba, Boba kid. Coop13, back again to say, not sure if this unpopular or if this is unpopular or not, but the but Rainbow Rares are the worst rarity to ever be created for the Pokemon TCG. They completely wash out all the distinct features of the character they represent. I seriously can't wait for them to be replaced. Uh, so I don't think they're necessarily the worst thing ever. But I do think they've kind of overstayed their welcome and should have been ended at the end of Sun and Moon. I feel like a broken record. I say this in, in maybe every one of these videos. On the other hand, the recent al alternative arts have been straight fire. Yeah, it's going to be see, it's gonna be weird to see where they go from there because like, how much more can they do? There, I'm sure there'll be something that uh, that replaces those, but... Or maybe they just get more and more intense. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like they also don't need both. There's enough um, hard-to-pull chase cards in these sets that I feel like we don't need. The Rainbow Rares can can be retired. Lavender Gengar says, Golds are amazing. All of them, seriously. And the Silver Dialga. Rango rainbows look boring and ugly. So more of this Rainbows. I don't know. This might be a popular opinion. Um but I think people are mostly just sick of them. Like when, when they first came out, the hyper rares, everyone was uh, was pretty pretty pumped, if I remember correctly. Um, so, man, that silver Dialga, I I love it because it's very unique and it wasn't overdone. But I feel like the matching Palkia was supposed to be a thing and just never ended up being a thing, and it kind of ruins it for me a little bit. Uh, it's so weird to see. Uh, like duos and trios that don't get the same treatment. And uh, I think this might be the worst offender of all. If you think of any others, please let me know. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It pains me. I, I do have one. And it pains me that it doesn't have the counterpart. Nelson says, not sure how unpopular this is, but I think the artistic choices made with the Megas are great. People say they're cluttered, etc. But I think it's just because it's one of those aesthetic things that change over time, and I believe they'll be more appreciated later on. Japanese text reminds me a little of Vaporwave and uh, Sukujin Jackets. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but... 
Basically, I'm saying E4's average member is too old to fully appreciate them. Hee <laughs> hee. So, I don't know. I really like Megas, so I think I maybe have a little bit of bias there. Just with that aspect. Also, Mega Mawile. Man, I loved playing that deck. Discarding energies like a, like a boss. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's... With the Mega... The, man, the Megas, too, was like right when I was getting back into... Uh, Pokemon, well, not necessarily right when I was getting back into Pokemon, but it was when I was getting back into or learning to play the game. I played when I was uh, a youngster, but I didn't really know what was going on. Early XY, started playing on PTCGO, and uh, no no regrets. Very fun. Had a blast with my, uh, my cousin. We just decided we found out that you could actually play uh, PTCGO and play online. And uh, did we ever... So <laughs> I feel like the G.I. Joe hit rate on the uh, the banner up top, which is random, uh, is uh, maybe more frequent than the other ones, but uh, maybe that's just a chance. Did, I, did someone set that to be <laughs> to be more likely to pop up? McMimi says, bring back Amazing Rares, get rid of Rainbow Rares. I got bad news for you. Uh, amazing Rares are just baby Rainbow Rares. British Badoof Corporation says they should bring back Prism Stars. I have no idea what they were supposed to do or what the point of them was. But they looked pretty cool and got thrown by the wayside before really getting a chance to shine. So, um, similar to Amazing Rares, Primums, Primum, Prism Stars were sort of like a little gimmick for the, the TCG. So, essentially, Prism Stars were a very powerful uh, cards, but you could only play one in your deck as opposed to being able to play four. So like Ditto Prism could evolve into anything. So it was like, it was basically like playing a fifth copy, um, or, you know, something that could be, could evolve into different stuff, a fifth copy of a basic Pokemon. Um, or if you didn't want to play another version, if you wanted something more versatile, uh, your Ditto Prism could evolve into anything else. So if, say you were playing a, you know, a War Turtle deck, if you had Squirtle, or if you had Ditto, you could use either one of them to evolve, evolve into the uh, War Turtle. So just like little stuff like that that would be absolutely busted if you could play four copies. Um, not all of them were that broken, but typically they were the, the power level of the, the Prism Stars was higher, which I thought was a pretty cool uh, cool thing. Polytoad666 says, hopefully this doesn't get me banned from SM Pat's <laughs> Patreon. But I've hated Kamiya art since I was like 8 years old. I'm 27 now. I was an otherwise pretty sharp kid, but it took me an embarrassingly long time to realize that his style was intentional and not just like bad art. Ha ha ha. Now that I'm older, I appreciate the impressionism a little more, but I still much prefer more traditional artwork. Huge fan of Southside though, so maybe that earns me some brownie points. Also love Sui and Kawaii. So... Um, I don't know. I, I think I like it. I like how identifiable it is. I like the the little bit of like abstract kind of stuff going on. You can spot them a mile away. Love it. I also love just in general how many different artists are being used in these recent sets especially. Um, and uh, very cool to see all their different interpretations on the, the Pokemon rather than uh, a few select artists that kind of give you a general idea of what they're supposed to look like uh, if we look back at something like base fossil a jungle kind of stuff collector says people are way too quick to condemn worn vintage boxes and boosters as reseal maybe this is time appropriate these things were mass produced of worse than toilet paper 22 years ago to be rough handed as globe trotting pallet fodder for comic book guys, greasy hands to throw into piles at the storage room. Not exactly something out of Bentley crew. So, yeah, to an extent. I mean, old stuff can get beat up. It probably wasn't treated very well its entire life. Uh, where it wasn't very valuable at a certain point. It's kind of surprising to see a lot of it not get opened at all. But, yeah, I think there's uh, more to it than damage. Um, when you do look for damage, it's uh, you know you can look for intentional damage, similar to the uh, the 
fake first edition base case where it was rubbed back and forth. Uh, some Rudy, Rudy damage. Niche says, new opinion, authentication only slabs are underrated for exceedingly rare cards. I mean, cards that only appear once every few months of that, not cards that are a hard grade but are common. My point is I'd rather see an authentic label than a grade six. So unless you really want it in a slab, if you're just going to get it authenticated, um, you're probably better off doing it yourself. Uh, but I, I kind of agree on the l less than like a PSA 6, especially depending on the card. I I would I would wager <laughs> that uh, anything a 6 and below, most people would not be able to name the grade. And the odds of that being recracked and resubmit uh, and getting the same 1 through 6 grade, slim to none. I shouldn't say slim to none because, I mean, and there's going to be like probably a, a reasonable chance. But I would say maybe even more often than not, you would end up with not getting that same 1 through 6 grade on the resubmission of the exact same card. I mean, even within a PSA 6, you can have like a, a, little, a little dent and they'll call it a 6 and the card could be immaculate other than that. Uh, or the thing could be rubbed around on the sidewalk and... And still get a six, so I don't know. the The low grades are, are pretty meaningless on a higher end card. Maybe you want to have that grade on there, just you know, as a reference for people to uh, to see. Who knows? It's up to the person that's going to keep it in the end. If you're not going to resell it, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's uh, it's up to you. So, gotta catch them all. It says authentic labels exist only to coddle weak egos. Take the grade in all situations. More polarizing than unpopular, I think as it's probably close to a toss-up. Um, yeah, so I think I'm just going to go back to what I said on the last one. It, if it's a six or less, unless it's like something crazy, some crazy trophy card or something like that that you're trying to like sell as a six, it doesn't mean a whole lot. I'm sorry to tell you. Collector says, I don't care about the 25 anniversary set, maybe... I'd be a bit enthusiastic about it if it actually actually signaled a fundamental change or restructuring of their model. As it is, this is probably just a faint blip of milking the fan service cow. And then it's back to the regular schedule of unicorn vomit and wannabe Exodia with Mewtwo's oily ball sack fingers. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, get, I've, I think I've said on the channel before what my opinion was on like the celebrations and stuff. I really like the new cards that they came out with. The ones with the different gimmicks. So like your Delta Species and your Level Xs and stuff that didn't normally or wouldn't normally have those. Or didn't at the time when those gimmicks were uh, implemented. But um, yeah, they're just direct reprints. In general, I'd much rather see new cards. I would have rather seen brand new cards for all of those. Um, I guess with the exception of stuff like the Pikachu uh, with the extended uh, artwork was really cool. But the rest of it, where it's just slap a base at Charizard, I don't know. doesn't really do anything for me. It's still cool, but uh, I'd much rather see the the new stuff. Give me, give me new cards. Give me new artwork. Give me new artists. Give me everything new. Wise Whalemer says, ripping other people's packs for them via box breaks is the biggest scam that has ever been normalized. I got news for you. Uh, there are much worse scams out there, and it's not that. Box breaks, not really my thing. I don't know how the, the rip and ship people do it. That would be painful. I can't imagine sitting there all night selling like one pack to someone um, 200 times and then packing up 200 envelopes the next day and, and shipping them off. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how some of them do it. But as long as there aren't any, there, as long as you don't implement like the illegal gambling and take it to that extreme where you got razzle dazzle mixwazzles, stuff like that, uh, you immediately get more scammy than what you're describing there. Um, the prices, price wise, if people want to charge extra, I mean, you're paying for the experience more than you are 
uh, paying for the pack itself. So you can't expect it to be uh, the actual price of the pack. Uh, there is some value there or people wouldn't partake in them. Uh, and as long as it's up front, it's not like a, a raffle kind of thing where it's, uh, you know, the MSRP, the total the total pay on a product is way beyond what all this evil scalper stuff that went on. Uh, but somehow it's uh, forgiven because it's a uh, Raz Dazzler and you're only paying a fraction of what the, the card was worth, but the odds of you getting it, not there. So I, I don't know, enough of that, but anyway, no, regular box breaks go to town. Um, if people don't want them, they don't have to pay for them, but uh, definitely not scam worthy. Um, at least as, as long as there's no extra details on there that are, that are making it scammy. Last one, we have Athletes and Antiquities, who says, I find sealed product boring. I totally get it from an investment standpoint and how they only get rare as more are open. But in terms of as a collector, I'd rather have a few of my favorite cards from that set rather than display the box, display the booster box or pack. I would totally agree. Uh, I do have some sealed stuff that I just holding on to for fun. Maybe someday it'll be worth something. Um, and when I do a sale, it'll probably, I'll probably just use the money for cards. So um, just uh, keep the, the ecosystem running. But yeah, I don't know. I'd much rather have the cards as well. And I can kind of get the fact that people like the artwork on the box and on the packs and stuff like that. But to me, I don't know. Cards overall. Uh, and I try to collect exclusively those. Uh, for that reason, and a lot of them. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in again. Join the Discord if you haven't. See you next time.